Yeah, I, I want to I want to talk about the general pu public ha hammering one side, and then usually the house always wins because that's how it works. I mean, especially during football season, if you see the public heavy on one team, it's almost a guaranteed sure they will lose. Like it seems robotic. There are so many games I could point at that. But I feel like in regular season basketball, it's really hard to just get a general overview of a public because it's not as popular to bet as during football season. Because like Sunday morning, people people log, people log on your website or DraftKings, however you do it, and you're looking at lines for football. You're placing bets on on a Sunday, a Joe Schmo Tuesday during an NBA season in February. Not everyone's looking at lines, so I feel like this is a time where Vegas can ex get exposed in terms of uh, public being heavy on one side. But if you look at an example. The Clippers and Nets game, the Nets were underdogs, I believe, at plus 185 money line, six and a half underdogs. I don't know what why that was a thing. Could you explain money, what you saw? Money. Yeah, if you, I, want, I want to talk about that before we get into anything tonight as well. Why do you think they were such heavy underdogs? I still don't know today. And the public hammer, hammered, the, ha hammered the Nets because that's just like the most high-powered offense in the league, six and a half point underdogs. Something's up with that. Like that line is one of those... It looks too good to be true, and if you hit it, they're going to lose. But they won the game. What, 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 do, what do you think about that? We know as an ex or as a fan and a sports veteran, a person who watches the sport, that dude, the Nets are way better than the the underdog, the the money line says, and especially against the Clippers. The Clippers are not that good. I, well, I don't think so personally. I, I know they have a great record, but I don't think that their record uh, says who they are. So, um I guess Vegas likes giving free money out sometimes. And when they do, I will always take advantage of that. And um, another team I wanted to mention as well that uh, Vegas might get exposed is with the Knicks. The Knicks have been amazing with uh, hammering the under. In the past 11 games, they've been 1-11 and on the uh, to hit the over. So always hit the under for the Knicks because that defense is amazing. And nobody talks about that defense because the general fan to the – the general fan knows that the Knicks are on the rise, but they don't think that they're as good as they are. And the defense right now is one of the best defenses in the league. And maybe that sounds a little biased because I am kind of a Knicks fan, but you know, I'll I'll take I'll uh, I'll take money from Vegas whenever I can. And the Knicks have been helping me a lot this year. Right. So in terms of like, we, we could look at all these games and say, we like this game, we like that game. But betting is more than just liking a game, placing a bet this game, that game. People love the parlays. I mean, if you, I mean, three, take three teams minus 110 line, you're making six times the money you put in. I mean, parlays are kind of looked at as a way to uh, free money for bookies. That's how a lot of people class the people who are experienced in this business and know what they're talking about. They say, okay, a parlay is a free money for business. How do you bet? Like as a capper's perspective, if you want to address like the way you uh, express the units, units is a big part of betting. Are you big on straight bets? Occasionally throwing teasers. If you do a parlay, are you into the two teams or three teams? And do you really like think you always avoid the five, six teamers, even though like the small to win big? I want to like get your take on that. The two that I bet are the heavier favorite, so I'll put about twenty-five dollars onto that. And I, I'm doing it small because I don't want to go hard on the units. Sometimes, or most of the time, my unit is ten bucks for a parlay. So let's say I, for example, last night I did a parlay. Uh, I did five NBA teams, and I went five and zero. Oh. I had the Bulls money line, Mavericks minus five, Heat minus five, which I was scared because they were they were down in the first half. Uh, Suns minus five and a half, and then I hammered the Wizards money line as well. Um, and I used $10 to win $414. Now with parlays, I do not recommend, I do not recommend hammering, hammering any hundred dollar parlays or $50 parlays because that's how you're going to lose your money really quickly. But when you are looking at parlays and the, the aspect of, okay, I, I can do five bucks, 10 bucks a day, go ahead and hammer it. And that's my philosophy when I'm doing parlays. But I do like to do my straight bets. And straight bets usually make the mo your majority of your money or save you when you're losing money on the parlays. Right. So you think the most efficient way to bet is always take straight bets. So is it 
how do you dictate what you want to put in a parlay versus what you want to take straight bets? It's just the straight bets you're like the more confident in. And then the parlays is kind of just like, okay, I think these could hit. Maybe this is a little my Hail Mary play for, for fun. Not small, small risk, of course, big reward. That's, that's everyone's favorite thing with gambling. I mean, the sm small risk that uh, big reward is why people get so hooked into parlays. And we see guys who end up going down a lot get hooked on parlays. They never want to. A wager a one ten for a hundred minus one ten line. They always they always want to do the ten for four hundred because it's eye opening or twenty for eight hundred. It just pops out. But I mean, just realistically, if that hitting like one game goes wrong, one bad beat at the end of a game. I mean, stuff like that happens. So like, what 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 are your thoughts on? Are you a big teaser guy, uh, or you stay away from that, or just the small parlays? And then when you go straight and you're confident, then you'll throw big on that. I recommend doing parlays, but don't get crazy with it and don't do over five teams. Because once you do over five teams, then it's a Hail Mary. Even if you do over four, four is kind of pushing it. Um, if you do want to like, I like to do like $25 to win 105, you could take two teams, do a two team parlay, that would be a lot easier. So um, I kind of like to stay away from the teasers as well. I'm not a fan of the teasers. I've never really had too much luck with them. What do you think about teasers? I don't like teasers in terms of NBA whatsoever. The NBA is just like, again, you're buying six. So what? from what I, my experience of websites that I've seen, it's you buy six points. A sweetheart would be you buy 10 points, but you get an awful money line for it. It's just like it looks eye-opening by the line. But in reality, it's just not a, It's not that big of a difference. I feel like the money you're putting in to buy a teaser is just not – equal to what you're actually getting out of it i've never been fond of the teasers i mean it just looks it looks very pretty on paper to like oh my god look at this line if i if to recommend any betters out there i would always avoid it with basketball because basketball is just one of those sports where i mean like you think you're in line to hit a bet boom a few fouls late in the game you're done you get a bad beat i mean it happens all the time i feel like football is the best sport to do it because you're kind of getting a, another touchdown of comfort I forget some some sites or some places you could bet it's you could get you could buy you'll buy six points of the teaser or seven I'm not really sure how which every every website or whatever is a little different but right. especially when you're right. buying when you're buying seven points I mean you're buying a touchdown which it kind of is a more comforting thing in terms of um, like just just comfort because it's one another possession difference but I think basketball is too tedious like there's just too many points scored so that's why I'm always a big believer in staying away from the teasers from where I see guys go up a lot it's guys know how to bet and they bet straight you don't chase your losses that is the biggest thing with betting when you if you have a mentality to go in say I'm gonna make money I'm gonna go in and I'm not gonna. I'm gonna make sure I never lose. Try to have that mentality. I feel like you're always gonna be behind the eight ball. And when you see yourself go down, especially early in the week, Monday and Tuesday is like the worst week to go down betting because then it's like then you just think about it all week. Oh God, I'm, I'm down, I'm down, I'm down. How am I gonna chase your losses? Chase, chase, once, once you chase yeah. anything in life, girls, money, betting. Once you start chasing, they start running away from you. You got to be calm and you got to be patient. Once you start fishing for lines and start looking every morning or throughout the day like oh my god what am i going to do what, what what can make me money today i think that's a really bad approach i think the best way to go about betting is you can't stress over it you just can't have the mentality that you're scared to lose or whatever you have to just i feel like every day you're looking at lines something should pop out you'd be like wow i really like that it shouldn't be oh what can make me money today or just like scramble to put a parlay in to chase your loss or uh, chase a bet just to uh, win back your losses. I think that's a really toxic way to betting. And that's how you can find yourself going down big. So I think you have to be really careful of your approach in terms of betting. Because like once you start chasing your losses, I mean, you're you're done. I, I mean, as, as fun as betting is, and for us, I mean, it's fun. You get, But all, all jokes aside, I mean, you really need to make sure you're comfortable with money. You know what your credit limit is. You know how much you're willing to lose. I feel like every bet you place, you should be a, like okay with losing that kind of money. Because if you're not, right. then right. that's where it could get that's where it could get scary, and that's where you could have problems down the road. I think it's just really important. Make sure you're comfortable with what you're betting. Do it for fun. If you're going out with your boys, this and that, you're going out to the bar, then it's fun to throw a little bit of money on it. You're watching a game, this and that. But in terms of chasing, is one of the most toxic ways to approach betting. But I just and I want to talk about again chasing losses. 
What do you think? What's the best way to get out of a deficit? Say you're down a hundred bucks for a week. You you think like just like if you really just want to make it back, like hit hit that bet that you really feels good straight wager one uh, one ten for a hundred. Or a lot of people try to put the parlays and try to hit that hail mary parlay to like try to get back the small risk high reward to get back in it. I feel like parlays. That's what I want to talk about. I feel like when in terms of parlays, parlays is something you should only do when you're playing with house money. If you're trying to chase a loss with that, I think that's just the most inefficient way. Because, like, say you're up 200, 300 bucks that week. If you want to throw in a 25, five team parlay, you're playing with house money. That's the time to throw in those big parlays and try to hit big because you're playing with house money. But it, when when you're down and you're trying to get back, I think the worst thing you do is try to throw those hail mary parlays in. I'm cool with a two teamer, maybe even a three teamer. But the four four teams and up, I would never recommend going four teams and up. If you're down that week, I always look at betting. I said, betting is equivalent to being a pitcher in baseball. When you're pitching from behind, it's really tough to be efficient. It's really tough. That's when you see pitchers let themselves go. That's when you see themselves having short outings. When they get down early in the first inning, it's hard for them to cover because they're pitching from behind. But when you're pitching from when uh, you're up, say you're, say you're the away team and your, and your team, your team goes up th three, four runs in the first inning. When you're when you walk out on the mound to throw your first warm up pitch, you have a significantly more confidence when you're going up there because you're playing with house money, you're playing with the lead. Then it's easier to be efficient. There's no, there's not as much pressure on you. You could do your thing. You could be yourself. You could take more risk that could actually be beneficial. You're not you're not pitching scared. I look at that with, with betting F during football season, for example. When you hit on Monday night, you feel really good. It's like okay, I'm up. I'm playing with house money. Now I can take part of my winnings and throw it at something. Then you're not chasing your losses. You're not scared to lose your own money because you're not playing with your own money so that's why i always thought about i was a pitcher when i when i played sports i was a pitcher when i played baseball and i always said and then when i got into gambling i said gambling is literally the equivalence of pitching in baseball because of the way you chase losses the way you chase runs I, I i always looked at that what do you think of that analogy i really like that and it is true it's all a mental game you can't be a mental midget when it comes to gambling you can't just you can't freak out especially when you're behind you have to be smart you have to you can't let your emotions control you you have to control your emotions when it comes to gambling especially when you're down especially when you're down so so and, and we're running up on time here so to, to wrap up what what are your lines from a capper's perspective what lines if you could if you could give the public three to four games that you love or tell them what bets you got tonight what do you what do you think to wrap up i got the hogs eight. minus eight Drummond's out. I don't like the locker room because it's not that healthy. I don't see any chemistry right now with this trade deadline going on. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to take the Hawks minus eight. The Knicks Warriors, I'm actually going to take the Knicks because they're at home. I'm going to take the money line on the Knicks. Um, they're at plus 102. So if you do put 100 down, you win 102 back. Um, and let's see who else I like. I do like the Nets money line, but the Nets money line is uh, – Almost minus no 250. No I, I saw minus 250. Is that what you got too? Yes. Buddy. Is not who the guy that they traded for. Um, I don't know who he is. He's not playing like I thought he was going to turn out. 17.5 points a game. I would. I want to take the over on that for a player prop, but I don't think I would. I, it's something I would shy away from. Um, who else do I have? Raptors Philly. I like Philly a lot. I also like um, just the way that Embiid's playing. I feel like he's he should be in talks for MVP. Nobody's really talking about that. I hear small little uh, whispers about it, but so far it's LeBron as the MVP. Uh, I don't know. I don't know yet. We'll talk about that maybe later. And then the Clippers. I'll take the Clippers. Uh, no, I'll take the Clippers money line. I don't want to take them over the spread. Got you, got you. All right, thank you so much, Mikey, for coming on. Love, love to talk some gambling. Definitely have you around soon. But yeah, we'll definitely keep in touch and let's let's see how your bets play out tonight. Good luck. Oh yeah, thanks. What's going on, guys? Thanks for joining me. We got some familiar faces back. There's just one NBA topic I want to talk about: the Brooklyn Nets, the most interesting team in the league, the hottest topic. I mean, everything in terms of the spotlight just shines on the Brooklyn Nets. Then defeating the Clippers 112 to 108 after being underdogs in that game for whatever reason. They won their last six games. They're half a game out for the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. Kevin Durant has missed the last four games, and they still won the past four games. So, with that being said, is it safe to say 
The Nets should be the favorite to win the NBA title. Are they the best team in the league over teams like the Clippers, the Sixers, the Jazz, the Lakers? Can we say that? What do you guys think about that? Yeah, you know how I feel about that. Um, you know, I still say the Lakers are the favorite because they have LeBron and AD. Uh, they might add Boogie. They might add some surprise guys. The Jazz are balling right now. The Clippers are balling right now. Um, but the Nets are looking good, man. Kyrie and Harden are looking like a good one-two punch, and KD's out. So imagine when KD comes back, but they don't play defense. <laughs> and DeAndre Jordan is shaky. So you can't just say they're the favorites. You know, they got to make it through the East. The Sixers are playing good ball. The Raptors are coming on. The Heat are coming on. You know, it's too early, man. You know, it's 30 games in, man. Cruz? Yeah, right now I would say the – the Nets are probably playing the best basketball in the NBA. They've won six in a row. I don't even, they're not even at full strength. Uh, there's a rumor they're probably, they could add Boogie Cousins and they can also still make a move at the trade deadline as well. Um, I think they're playing the best. The Lakers right now are clearly struggling without AD because they're just asking LeBron to do way too much right now, uh, especially in year at, you know, his peak of his career. But it is still really early. I think that, I think. Uh, you know, the Jazz are still playing good. The Clippers are starting to come along. The Phoenix Suns are starting to really look like a scary team. Uh, they're young. They can shoot you out of the gym. Uh, Devin Booker is has progressed so well in his career. Uh, the Miami Heat are starting to catch their feet a little bit now with everyone starting to get healthy. Um, I see them try and make a big move at the trade deadline as well. But I would say right now, the way the Brooklyn Nets look, uh, I think they're going to be tough to beat in a seven-game series. Chris, yeah, I'm with I'm with everybody here. The Nets are fantastic, and they're they're not even at their full potential yet. You know, like Dragon Ball Z, like you, they haven't even taken their final form yet. You know, because uh, you know KD has been out a couple games, but James Harden is he's hit another switch like he normally does. He's playing an unworldly basketball with his averages, and he was clearly we saw it. He, he was just kind of coasting through uh, the Houston Rockets schedule at the beginning of the season. Then he goes to to the Nets and he's just unbelievably insane what he's doing. And we, we touched on it briefly last time we all got together where the, the East is, to me, it's always been inferior to the West. So the West is, you know, that's that's a topic for another day. But right now, the Nets, once they start to get clicking, I mean, again, they're, they're doing very well now, but when they add that extra layer of KD and everybody starting to hit on all cylinders, uh, they're without a doubt my favorite in the East. But when we get to like a finals, thing uh it's all up in the air way early but it's still fun to talk about these things you could say i'm overreacting you could say it's too early to tell the nets are head and heels above the competition especially in the eastern conference they have no competition in the east the only thing in their way you could say a fully healthy los angeles lakers but the brooklyn nets should be the favorites to win the nba title and it's not even close at this point this sound could sound ridiculous but it's the truth the firepower this brooklyn nets team is very similar. Maybe not that quite great, but it's pretty close to the Kevin Durant Golden State Warriors. I'm very confident to say that. Kyrie Irving has been in his bag. What that dude can do with the basketball in his hands is really something I've never seen before. For a dude 6'2", 6'3", probably 175 pounds soaking wet, finishes in traffic no matter how many guys are at the rim, it, I don't think I, any 2K player, if you put it on rookie mode, you still can't do the things he could do with the ball in his hands. The way he could dance on a guy, it's at the point where you give the ball to Kyrie and he will get a bucket. He's a walking bucket. He's the most unguardable player in the league despite his size. He could take a guy off the dribble, shoot the three ball in traffic, money. Pull up in mid-range, in traffic, stop on a dime, money. Has a post-fade bank that I don't know how he pulls off. Somehow, the way he creates space with the ball in his hand is truly special. He is box office. Not only is he giving you 27 and a half a game, he's taking the toughest shots of any player in the league. Shooting from the field at 52%, 40% from three-point range, and over 90% from the three-point line. That's what he's doing right now. And with that being said, he's just a guy you can count on late in the game, whether it's the regular season, early in the playoffs, the conference finals, the finals. Give him the ball. He will get you a bucket. James Harden is doing exactly what he needed to do when he put on that Brooklyn Nets uniform. Those 40-point 40, 40 virtuosos that he had in Houston, no more anymore. He's not going to be able to do that. 
playing with the star power that he is in that Brooklyn Nets team. Leading the league in assists, proving he is a fantastic playmaker. Let's give it what it is. He took his points per game down about 10 points a game, which that's exactly what I said when he was traded. His assists need to ramp up, exactly what happened. And he's being more efficient. He's not taking as bad of shots. He's still getting to the free throw line. He's still putting up points. And leading the league in assists and playing the point guard role which is what a lot of us thought he needed to do. And then Kevin Durant, when he's playing, he still looks like a top two to top three player on the planet Earth. And the firepower that this Brooklyn Nets team... Oh, by the way, let's not mention Joey Buckets, who's shooting 50% from three-point range. There is no team in the league, including a healthy Lakers team, that has the firepower to go bucket for bucket with this Brooklyn Nets team. Maybe they could do it for a half. Maybe they could do it for three quarters. But there is no team in the league that can go four quarters, bucket to bucket, and go on pace with this Brooklyn Nets team. I'm sorry. They just, teams just do not have the firepower. And a lot of people are overreacting to the defense. This is basketball. Let's stop pretending where offense and defense is way the same in this sport because it's not, and it's not even close. The definition of basketball is putting the ball in the basket. Guys who could get you points is going to be way more valuable than a guy who could check a guy at the perimeter or protect the rim. The Brooklyn Nets are head and heels above their competition. I said before the season, before they acquired James Harden. The Nets will make the Eastern, excuse me, the Nets will cruise through the Eastern Conference playoffs in 15 games or less. That looks like it's going to age really well. Not only do I think it's going to be 15 games or less, I'm starting to get the feel they could get through the East in about 13 games. I think they are that great, and I don't think anyone in the East is going to really compete with them because the East is trash. That's how high I am, high I am on the Brooklyn Nets. What do you think about that? That'd be a really good Vegas bet, actually. I, I would, I would, if the, if the over under was set at fifteen, I'd probably take the under, honestly. In the yeah, in the in the Eastern Conference final. I mean, like I said, we talked about it last time. The Eastern Conference is laughably, laughably bad. I think if at the time, the last time we talked, there was only three teams that were above five hundred in the entire Eastern Conference. And Brooklyn was one of them. And Bro- like I said, Brooklyn's finding their their chemistry. And I think Steve Nash right now is probably coach of the year. He's not getting a lot of love, but I think Steve Nash has come in. Uh, it, yes, it helps when he has three amazing players, but his offensive scheme has been great. The defense kind of worries me a little bit, not so much in the Eastern Conference because they are they were twenty eighth in the league in points allowed. Um, and that can come back to haunt you if you're having a bad shooting night. We've seen it a little bit this season already in the 12 games that they've lost. Uh, but I think you're right. I don't think anyone in the Eastern Conference can touch them unless someone makes a huge blockbuster move. If Philly were to go get a Bradley Beal or Miami were to go get a Bradley Beal with a healthy Jimmy Butler and a health and a healthy Bam, maybe you could take them to a five, six game series, but no, I, I don't see anyone in the East. Not even, not even the Bucks could can hang with this team if they're fully healthy. Speaking speaking of betting and betting odds, the Nets, as we stand today, are plus two seventy five to win the championship, and they have an even line to win the Eastern Conference. I personally took them before the season started to win the East at plus two thirty five, which that is a steal and a half. So I mean, I I really as long as the the only thing that's stopping the Nets is health. And I want to talk about their defense for a second. A lot of people panicking about their defense. Again, I addressed that offense is not equivalent to defense. First of all, their defense is getting much better. We've seen that. Once the postseason plays, like the regular season and the postseason are two different seasons, even though in reality it's one collective season. It's two different styles of basketball. Regular season, guys are taking offs night. They're trying less on defense. They're They're conserving their energy. The playoffs, people are getting in, guys. The game slows down. More half-court offense, tighter defense. Guys are going to put more effort into it. So just by the game slowing down is going to help the Nets be way better than any other team in the East. Again, the 76ers are at their best when they're pushing the pace. The Bucks are only good when they're pushing the pace. And after that, there's actually just nobody in the East. I mean, the Celtics look inc- consistently inconsistent or inconsistent, consistent, whatever you want to call it. I mean, they just, like, I don't think they have competition. They just have too much firepower, and no team can really, like, go bucket to bucket with them. I mean, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, are there any other two guys you'd rather hand the ball to late in a game to create their own shot and get an ISO bucket than those two? 
Plus, you have James Harden to look at as well. I mean, when you're looking at that, you need a closer. Kyrie Irving is a bona fide closer in this league. A bona fide closer. The Bucks don't have a closer. I don't think the Sixers have a closer. The Heat have been a disaster. The Celtics have been close to a disaster. Who who's gonna who's gonna even put up a series against this team? I really can't say that. I guess you could say a healthy Lakers team. Right now, I'm taking the Nets. I'm taking the Nets to win it all. I will say though, Miami is getting healthier. They're seven and three in their last three game in their last ten games. And they're, they're, they're getting healthy for the first time all season. So, I mean, I wouldn't count them out anytime soon. Again, I, I'm not going to pick them to win in a series. But we've seen Miami, when they're fully healthy, their defense and their offense, they will shoot. They can shoot with anybody with their threes. I mean, Tyler Hero, um, Jimmy Butler can hit the three. You have Goran Draga when he's healthy. Uh, Duncan Robinson's nothing to sneeze at either. Uh, and like I said, if they go out and they re- acquire a big trade before the deadline, I think the Miami Heat can make some noise in the in the East. I think, but that would be that's the only team I would pick in the East if if this is going to go down to a three pointing uh, three or uh, three point shooting competition. A uh, healthy Miami team is the only team I'm keeping up with them. But again, I'm not going to pick them in the seven game series against KD and Kyrie and Harden and the way this uh, team looks, but. I've seen some of the points they're giving up. I mean, they're it's not like they're giving up over 100. They're giving up 120s. They're giving up 115s. They're giving up they're giving up a lot of points. But granted, they have the offensive firepower like you have to 130 is the number. If you want to beat this team, if they're on all cylinders, 130 is is the points you got to reach as the other team. And what team what team is really going to do that? What team you could say could go bucket for bucket for 48 minutes, four quarters of that team? That's why I'm so high in them. Yeah. The Golden State Warriors are a good example to compare to this Brooklyn Nets team. Sure, the Nets don't shoot the lights out like that Warriors team did. But we've how many times have we seen the Warriors struggle in the first half or a team compete with the Warriors, shoot similar to them, have a lead in through a, a first half? But what was that Golden State Warriors team known for? The third quarter. The third quarter is where they come out of the gates and break you. That's where they shoot the lights out. That's when Oracle Arena goes nuts. They got the crowd behind them. And they start shooting the lights out. And teams just simply don't have firepower to go bucket for bucket with that. And that's why they were actually so great. Because teams can't go 48 minutes or four quarters with that team. And especially, not just one game for 48 minutes, a seven-game series. That's why the Brooklyn Nets will be crowned champions at the end of this year. Because even with a LeBron, AD, Dennis Schroeder, Montrose Harrell, it's not enough. It's simply not enough. The Lakers are great when they're healthy. They're just, they just don't have the offense that the Brooklyn Nets do. I'm so like there's nobody to check Kyrie Irving in this league. There's nobody to check Kevin Durant, and there's no one really to check James Harden. Sure, LeBron would get his, AD would get his, Schroeder would give you some quality minutes. It's just not – they're not better than them. They're simply not better than them. And the firepower of that Brooklyn Nets team, I just don't think any team could beat them in a seven-game series. The Lakers have the best chance. But in terms of the Eastern Conference, honestly, I would be if the, if the Nets lose one playoff game in the Eastern Conference, I'm going to be shocked. That's how high I am on them. Look, real quick, I know just sitting back, taking this all in when you guys are talking, and it's quite clear that you don't have me on for my for my basketball knowledge. It's more, you know, kind of my opinion as kind of as an outsider looking in. And then I was, you know, kind of prepping, watching a couple of things leading up to the broadcast here. And just, just my two cents here, nothing crazy, just a personal opinion here. Well, the Nets were, you can look it up, they were getting shredded on the offensive, or excuse me, on the defensive side of the ball as Cruz was saying here, but they've tightened it up. And I just read an article. I'd love to, to quote who wrote it, but I don't have it in front of me. It said, like, let's hold our horses here. The, the Nets defense isn't the 89 Pistons here, but they're starting to tighten things up. And I'm, I know this is this is not very shocking to say this, but uh, I'm with you on Kyrie. But when Kevin Durant gets back in the mix, it's either going to, obviously, it's either going to hurt or help. And there's people on both sides. I've seen no in between here. And obviously, there's no way that Kevin Durant coming in here 
here is going to throw a wrench into the works. When, when Kyrie is at his best, it is when he's freed up to do other things. And with Harden on the court, he's the one, I think, as you put it, uh, Falco, that's he's initiating the offensive here, uh, leaving Kyrie to do other things. And, and he is unbelievable. And again, personal opinion of mine, uh, if it matters much, I'm not really a Kyrie guy. I've never, uh, I never liked what he's done in terms of, uh, I just don't want to play tonight. I'm going to sit out, but he's kind of shut me, shut me up because he's kind of turned it up now and he looks unbelievably fantastic. Can I say something? So you, you remember the last show I told you Kyrie's not taking a back season to anybody. And we see that. So if Kyrie continues to play like this, Falco, you might be right, man. But they got to play defense, man. All this 115, 120 giving up, no, nah, that, that's not going to fly in the playoffs. Because, you know, playoffs, is every position counts. Every every possession counts more. These guys are locking down more. They care more. You know, regular season, they go through the motions and try to get through the regular season. They might try to go hard to get seeding. But the playoffs is a different animal. So I need to see them do this in the playoffs. I know what Kevin Durant can do. I know what Kyrie can do. Kyrie hit the shot with Cleveland. James Harden is a flame out in the playoffs. He has changed that narrative for them to win. I saw James Harden with the bed in person in Houston in 2017 against the Spurs in game six. He had 11 points in game six in the elimination game. Kyrie and Kawhi was out. If James Harden is your third option on your team, I don't care if it's a regular season or postseason, so, so you, got, you got something going pretty well. I mean, <laughs> right. I, my, my first option late in the game is Kyrie Irving. That's, I really just like, they, dude, there's oh, yeah. just, oh, yeah, yeah. he's impossible to check. There is no way to defend a six a six two guy who's 170 pounds so soaking wet. I mean, when you have him and then you also have a Durant, I mean it's one A, one B in terms of who you got late late uh a uh, late option go to guy to get you a bucket. But in terms of the defense, one, it's getting better, like I already addressed. Two, the postseason, it's a slower game. Just being slower, that total that they have defensively is gonna come down. I am not worried about their defense whatsoever. And again, I think defense is so much about effort, which in the postseason, people are like, they're going to go, they're going to get in guys. They're going to try harder, but there's just still nobody who could check those three guys. And Joe Harris, I think has been extremely underrated. I mean, 50% from three point range, the Duke of finishing transition a little bit. He's like, he could create his own shot a little bit. I mean, they, they're stacked. Like, I, James Harden's the third option. So if like if my concern is I don't know if James Harden can do it. Sure, you could say that in Houston because he was the number one option. In terms of late game, in terms of fourth quarter option, he's the third option. I mean, James Harden's my third option. I, I'll sign up for that. I'll sign up for that. I don't know about you guys, but any last thoughts to wrap up? No, I think if <clears throat> I mean there's some rumors going around of like who Brooklyn wants to you know bring in. They want to bring in Co uh, Boogie Cousins. Al Horford might be on the trading block, and now. Dallas is kind of making it known that poor Zingas is up for trade as well. So if they were able to land any of those three guys, I think it's it's game over. It's a wrap. But and I, I don't think right now, I think with how the Lakers look without AD and for how long he's going to be out, because we really don't know how long he's going to be out. Like he could be to a position with the way that the, Jazz, the, uh, the Utah Jazz are playing, the LA Clippers are playing, the, the way the Phoenix Suns look that the Lakers could play themselves into a four or five seed uh, the way this going, because if they, if they, if AD decides that, Hey, we, we don't want to bring you back. We don't want to rush you back. So we're going to sit you out possibly even longer after the all-star break, they could find themselves in a hard position, but in the, it's, it's a one team race right now in the East. I don't even think it's, I don't even think it's close, uh, especially with the way, that Brooklyn looks, and I, if if I could take that bet uh, over under fifteen games, uh, sweep the Eastern Conference playoffs, I'm taking the under. I mean, I would be. I, I would say there's probably going to be one game where they're just they're having an off night on the road, or or they just you know the team shoots lights out. We always have one of those games, but I would say they probably win the Eastern Conference right now. I would say at least I would say 13, 14 games. 
I, to me personally, I'm a, a big betting aficionado with this, with all these sports books readily available at a you know moment's notice. Here, I was able to catch the last portion of your your broadcast here when you were with uh, uh, that other guy here, and I love that bet. It's got to be available somewhere in some book, whether it's FanDuel or DraftKings here. But just to to close out for me personally here, I love what Rob was saying. The narrative of James Harden can he get over that that playoff hump here where he's not constantly just doesn't show up here and sooner or later i mean this guy he, what is he he's on the verge he could, he could win uh what was it boys it's uh, like three straight uh scoring titles and assist titles and all that that's all well and good you know in a regular season those look good on your mantle behind you while you're broadcasting when you retire or something here but these guys are it's they want to win championships and rings especially if in any other sport in terms of uh, like the importance NBA, it's all about championships. When you talk, we did that last time we got together. We compared who do you think is better, Jordan, LeBron? I mean, that the conversation can get run into the ground uh, on all social media platforms here. Harden knows. Harden wants to get over it, but will he be able to this year in the playoffs? Again, a long ways away, but it's still something that I'm personally going to be paying attention to. Rob, final thoughts before we, before we wrap up? I mean, just piggyback what you said. It's going to be a Harden, you know. We're, we're Harden with the bid. We're Harden put um, the game over partying and getting strippers and Instagram models. Well, will he put his priorities for first? I think play, playing with Kevin Durant, that's a blessing in disguise because they were together in OKC. KD would be like, yo, James, like, don't do that, you know. And Houston, he had nobody to do that. He was the, he was the alpha dog in Houston. He did what he wanted to do. He disrespected Dan Tony and did whatever, you know. He had so much talent. They like, oh, we got to just cater to James and do all this. And he constantly wet the bed in the playoffs every year. But now he has Kyrie and KD. And, you know, maybe he can't, maybe he can't get over the hump. But I won't say the East will be a cakewalk, man. You know, you got Milwaukee, you got Miami, you got Toronto, you got Boston. You got to see these guys in the series. I'm not saying they're going to beat the, the Nets, but you got to see them in the series, man. Anything can happen. And I won't sleep in Miami, man. Miami's my pick again. I told you that last time. Miami's my pick. <laughs> I mean, again, J- James Horn- James Horn's your third option in-, in the fourth quarter. So, I mean, him wetting the bed and I think him partying and being in the stripper club. I mean, I think that was all a plan to get out of Houston because he didn't want to be there and he wanted to be in Brooklyn. And, again, it worked. But that's going to wrap up today. Thank you guys for joining me once again. Always a pleasure to talk sports, sports with you. If you wanted to shout out your uh, platforms or podcasts, yeah, uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram and Twitter at the Real Cruise Ox, and then my podcast, uh, the Cruise Control Podcast. Uh, new episode tomorrow. I have ESPN's very own Tom Luganville on. We talk college football recruiting. Uh, we talk the future of National Signing Day post COVID, and uh, prayers up to Tiger Woods. He was in a bad car accident, so uh, prayers up to him. You could find me on Twitter at Detroit Beastie. I'd like to think if, if you're looking for me, you don't have to look long and hard. You don't have to look far. Uh, newly minted member of the Undroppables. So podcasting, rankings, DFS stuff galore. Come find me. I pride myself on getting back to everybody who reaches out or asks me a question. Thank you. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you can find me on Twitter, rparksjr85, rparks85 on IG. Um, right now I'm in Orlando covering the Magic. Um, so I'm going to the Magic game tonight. Uh, they're playing the Pistons, so I'm doing a lot of Magic coverage. Uh, NBA, NFL, ParksportsRecreation.com, 48minutes.com, and uh, you know, follow me. And uh, guys, I'll follow you guys as well. Maybe we can collab in the future. Man. Yeah, yeah thank thanks for coming on. If you guys haven't already, um, the Falco takeaway on Instagram and YouTube, and even TikTok now a little bit. So thanks again, guys, for coming coming on. Always a pleasure to talk sports with you. Hope to see you guys soon.